probably the guy that is standing between you and the cocktails, so I'll try and keep this uh, as short as possible. Um, uh, my name is Vasudevan Swaminathan, in short Vasu, and uh, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Shuchi Systems that you see on the other side, the blue and the yellow one. We started in 2016, we are seven years old, a $10 million organization with about 500 people. Um, the reason for my topic, uh, Advaitam Avial and uh, Artificial Intelligence is, uh, I started cooking about five years back. When I'm not traveling, I cook at home. So I do Avial, which is a Tamil Nadu, Kerala type dish, um, you know, that has a certain way to be done right in order to get the right taste. And uh, Advaitam is a branch of Indian philosophy. Uh, that deals with the Brahman and everything. So I got some interest in that. At the end of the day, we all figure out what happens after death, where do we go and everything. So that was my inquiry or self-inquiry into who am I, what's going on and everything. That's how I ended up with uh, Advaitam. Um, as I learned more cooking, as I did more cooking, as I learned more Advaitam, and uh, when I got this invite from NASCOM, I thought uh, it makes a lot more sense to connect artificial intelligence with these two topics, actually, that I'm you know, equally uh, invested in. And of course, uh, artificial intelligence, we started doing in Shuchi about uh, five years back. So I wanted to give some stories and examples of how I'm trying to connect these. And if it uh, makes some sense, I'm happy. If it doesn't, I'm sorry to have disappointed you. With that being said, I'll get started. Um, I'm a big uh, fan of Jay Mohan, a bilingual writer in India who writes in Malayalam as well as in uh, Tamil. I read his Tamil work, actually. So there was very, something very interesting that he said. He said, uh, fundamental questions are those that seek to explain the underlying philosophies of life. I think when we talk about things like artificial intelligence or nuclear physics and things like that, at least for me, I usually go back to my teachers in school. For example, when I tried to learn calculus in school, I never understood it, integral calculus or differential calculus. So one of the teachers tried to explain it in a very simple form. She said, um, Vasu, if you had to count the total number of hairs in your head, how would you do? I said, I don't know. You'll take a small portion from your head and then count in that part and then try and apply logic to figure out how many hairs in the total, I mean, how many hairs you have in the complete portion of your head. And that was calculus for me. So when Jay Mohan said this, I realized that it is the teachers who make it very simple for us. So not stopping there, Jay Mohan also led me to two more teachers of uh, Advaita Vedanta, uh, Nitya Chaitanya Yeti with the black beard and Naraja Guru with the white beard. Uh, there were two stories of them which had a very profound impact on me and of course which led me to this topic also. So I'll try and share it. I'll keep this very short, I promise, okay? So um, Nitya, Nitya Chaitanya Yeti was um, walking in his ashram in Fernhill, Udi and uh, was engaged in a very deep philosophical conversation with his student and uh, from the chimney, the kitchen chimney, um, the smoke came actually. So he stopped for a moment and said, the guy who is making the tea in the kitchen put the sugar ahead of time in the water and now the tea is going to really taste bad. So having engrossed in a deep philosophical conversation, his senses were always open to different things. He was always open to everything actually. So this is an example where you know, he was you know, literally observing everything and then all of a sudden he said, this tea is not going to taste bad simply because somebody added sugar ahead of time in the water. And it so happened in his earlier days when he wanted to you know, become a monk and he went to Nadraja Guru, uh, he was a very rich person. By the way, uh, Chaitanya Yeti was a rich man uh, from uh, you know, Kerala uh, and he had a you know, rich family and everything. So when he went to uh, become a monk, um, you know, he and Nadraja Guru obviously as Guru and Sishya spent a lot of time together and in one of their early days, uh, Nadraja Guru told Yati to cook avial for him actually. He said, today we are going to have rice and avial. And uh, Yati was like surprised and a little shocked and to say a little hurt actually. He said, I came all the way here to learn Advaita Vedanta from you. I didn't come here to learn Avil. You know, I didn't, I didn't come here to make Avil or learn to make Avil. I came here only because I wanted to learn Advaita Vedanta from you. Why are you making me do all these things? Why are you making me to, you know, do Avil and things like that? I had servants at home who used to take care of things. I have not even seen the kitchen at home. You know, why should I go through this? So it was a very important line that Naraja Guru told him. I'll try to say it in Tamil and then in English. Um, in Tamil he said, Or nalla avial vekka teriyadu anala, epidi advaitam kattikam mudiyum. Which translates to, a man who refuses or who doesn't want to learn how to make a good avial, how do you expect him to learn Advaita Vedanta? 
This statement had a very profound impact on me. And uh, every time I engage in learning something, when I try to do something, I've always taken this line as an inspiration by saying, how do you really do big things if you don't understand the small things, basically? So if a topic like Advaita Vedanta can be learned only when you do smaller things like Avil, it becomes all the more important to learn the fundamentals before you get into something like artificial intelligence. So for the past five years or so, whenever I make an Avil, I make sure that there is a certain way in which I do it so that it tastes really well, actually. I'll come to that in a little bit. Um, so these fundamental questions that we just spoke about were also because of the experience that we carried in our first AI implementation back in 29, sorry, 2019. We had a financial, institutions in, uh, financial institution in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, who came to us and said, can you build a predictive analytics model for us that would actually bucket our lenders or the, to those who we lend actually into four different categories. They are either excellent, their repayment is excellent, or they are good, or they are like, you know, you can give them money, there is a chance they might not pay, they might pay, or finally saying, no, don't lend any money to these guys. So when we tried building this model, we, we were talking about a lot of things. Conversations were more around, do we use a decision tree algorithm? Do we use random forest? Do we use nave base and things like that? But ultimately, when we went to the customer, uh, the data scientist, everybody from our side, when we went, the customer said, I have two MB of data with me that my team has collected for the past 10 years. Now, whichever algorithm you want to apply, you can apply, but I have only two MB of data. So that led to a very, very important revelation, which is basically, it doesn't matter what algorithm you use, what that data science model you want to build. It ultimately comes down to quantity of data, quality of data, and integrity of data. It's integration there, that's a typo. What I meant is data integrity, actually. So one of the things we realized in these five years as we started building systems uh, you know, around artificial intelligence is we failed a lot. And if any of you are looking to build an artificial intelligence system, you should come to us, not because we succeeded. We failed a lot, and we learned a lot, actually. So one of the very important things we learned was on this one, which is to make sure that uh, you know, there is a fair level of, uh, you know, uh, data that you need in order to build a system. And obviously, that leads us to the steps that is involved in doing that. Like I said earlier, when you make an avil, which is the food dish, you have to choose the right vegetables, you have to boil them in the right time, you have to get it out of boiling in the right time, then you have to take the coconut, the green chilies, everything, make the paste, mix it at the right time, you have to slightly, you know, stir it a little bit, and then finally you have to get it out, and then keep it in a certain, you know, texture so that you can add the curd or the milk and make it really taste well. So for me, doing artificial intelligence implementation is the same. You have to select the right kind of data, make sure that the data has integrity, there is enough quantity of data, quality of data, integrity, and then you have to make sure that there is certain level of feature engineering that you do, and then finally you get to a point where you try and create some accuracy, and then you keep building on that accuracy, basically. So that's a very important thing that I learned in the process of building artificial intelligence systems. And uh, despite the fact that we talk about corporates looking at 87 percentage of corporates looking to use AI and uh, you know, a lot of organizations trying to make AI as the priority for the business, there is a source from LinkedIn that says that 80 percentage of AI projects actually fail. And uh, you know, it is simply because the steps that we just spoke about are not in place. And that's the reason most AI projects fail. Like without data getting into direct model evaluation, implementation, or lo not looking at the data, trying to build an accuracy and things like that. So this is a very important aspect that we learned over the years by you know, repeatedly doing artificial in impl intelligence implementation. And uh, just to you know, expand a little bit more in terms of the steps towards building artificial intelligence, we also saw that you know, it's very closer to what uh, we have in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So you know, one of the things that we have also learned is, this is a very important uh, you know, piece of information that uh, you know, I've always admired that came from Monica Rogati a few years back. So she says that you know, collecting data, moving and storing the data, and then exploring, aggregating, learning, all this leads to a certain level before you get into AI, deep learning, and everything. I think one of the panel members also said that when they were saying that you, know, you can look at deep learning models, you can look at everything, but ultimately, if you don't have what is needed in the other four pyramids, the AI implementation is basically going to fail. So I'll just come to the end of this presentation by saying that uh, Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh said, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. 
And you know, great things like AI is all about focusing on the small things. Like you know, when it comes to making a simple food dish, there is a series of steps that we do that you know that really makes the food so special, right? We eat, we eat everywhere. You know, at the end of the day, we eat so much of food. But we say, I like my mom's food more than anything else. Have you ever wondered why is that? It's not because she's your mom. It's because there is a certain patience that she puts in. There is a certain you know way in which she adds the spices. There is a certain way in she actually does it, and that's what makes it taste so good. Actually, nothing else. If you look at it, so every time we say you know my mom is the best for, you know a maker of food, and that's simply because there is a series of things that she follows, small things that she follows in order to make that particular dish that we all look forward to, right? So it goes to the same prow, which is great things are done by a series of small things brought together. So. So looking to in, in in our experience of building AI systems, in our experience building data science systems for the past five years, we have learned that when it comes to building data science or uh, AI, AI systems, it is very important to focus on the smaller details and not lose track by getting into a lot of implementation uh, details, uh, you know, building pipelines, this, that, and everything actually. But rightly said, there is a step to get there, there is a pyramid to get there. And when followed or when rightly done, there is a very high chance that you have success when it comes to a strategy for enterprises. With that, I end it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vasu. We sure are going to look at Avial very differently now. Thank you so much for that.